So you now have a convenient investment platform. Simple and easy to use. It accords you the privilege of investing 50 pesos to only 1,000 pesos. And you did just that. Is it good enough? No! Hi, this is Rex Mendoza from Ramper Financials. Mga ka-RFF, don't get me wrong. I know that we have a lot of great investment platforms in our midst. And at the tip of our fingertips, very conveniently, we can all invest. Obviously, Gcash with its G-Invest platform, there is Seedbox, there is the IMG portal, and Call Financials, and many, many more out there. Baka mamaya, sa ganda ng mga platform na yan, hindi naman natin ginagawa ang tama. This time, I'm going to be wearing my Rambler hat to make sure that we do what we have to do. And that is to handhold you through this process. Hindi po tama lang na meron tayong magagandang investment platform at tayo nakapag-umpisa na mag-invest. What happens next? What after this? Kasi ang nakakatakot, dalawang bagay. Number one, naglagay kayo ng 50 pesos, naglagay kayo ng 1,000, tapos-tapos na. Aba, ang mangyayari niyan, yung 50 pesos, kahit napakaswerte mo, 20% compounded interest rate in the next 5 years, magiging 120 plus pesos na yan. May pambili ka na ng iced tea. <laughs> diba? O, oh, tapos yung mga naglagay ng 1,000, sabihin na natin, ganun din. 20% compounded earnings and yield rate for the next 5 years. Oh, kulang ko lang, may 2-5 ka na in 5 years. May pambili ka na ng sapatos. Ito ba ang gusto natin? So it's not good enough. The platforms by themselves are great. But we still need to do what has to be done to make them work to our advantage. To make them great instruments to fulfill our financial dreams. Akala natin, ganun-ganun na lang, hindi pala. Yung iba naman, sigurado, nag-iisip, magdadagdag ako. Pero hindi nakaprograma. Nagdadagdag lang kung kailan nila maisip magdagdag. And because of this, wala talaga tayong tinatawag na consistency in our investing. Eh kasi Rex, wala akong pandagdag eh. Eh kasi Rex, wala akong excess ngayon eh. Wala naman talagang mangyayaring ganun kung hindi mo gagawa ng paraan, di ba? Again, I've said this many times. Walang sweldong nagkasya sa taong mahilig gumasta. Eh di ba yun ang totoo? Now, let me share with you something that I've always shared in all of my talks two decades ago. Two decades ago, when I did talks for financial planning, I always use this metaphor. I always use this set of analogies. And I'm excited to share that with you. You know, after 20 years, I still go back to this. Ito po. Tingnan natin ito. If this piece of paper is your income, so medyo lumit na nga siguro dahil may pandemic, pero you still have to manage this, right? So ano ang unang-unang ibabawas mo dito? Pagpalagay na natin, bawas natin, safe na ba? Yan ang tinatawag nating necessities. Food, shelter, our maintenance, utilities. Tama po ba na ganitong kalaki yun, out of your total income? Di ba wala na nga masyadong spending for clothing ngayon eh? Unless dun sa mga mahihilig lang mag at Lazada. So, is it fair that ito yon? So, syempre po, ito na lang ang natira. O, oh, eh di ba? Meron pa tayong subscription ngayon sa Netflix, sa mga entertainment and movie channels. Ibabawas pa rin natin yan. Tinuhulugulugan natin ang mga subscription na yan eh. Eh syempre, hindi naman tayo makakapanood kung wala tayong load, kung wala tayong mobile data, kung wala tayong broadband at home. Habibina, bayaran din natin yan. At 
hindi naman talaga natin maiiwasan, syempre, kahit papano, may shopping din. ba diba, paminsan-minsan, tinitingnan din naman natin ano ang pwede nating bilhin at ano ang pwede nating maging libangan. At this time, na nakakulong naman tayo. Now, I have nothing against this. No, sabi ng iba, syempre, magpa-deliver tayo. Tulungan natin ang industriya, tulungan natin ang mga negosyante para naman makasurvive sila. Okay po sa akin yun. Wala naman problema yun. Pero bantayan nyo lang ang sarili nyo. Pag ginawa nyo ito todo-todo, baka kailangan mamaya, ayun ang kailangan tulungan. So, easy-easy lang. O, oh, di ito na lang po natira. Eh, kahit anong gawin nyo, hindi nyo lang nakikita. May kukuha at may pabawas pa dyan eh. Hindi nyo lang alam kung sino. Whether si Mrs. o si Mr. o ang mga bata. So ano na lang ang natirang pang-invest? Ito. Ito na po ang natitira. Nakasulat po sa Biblia ito eh. Kung anong tinanim, yun ang aanihin. You sow what you shall reap. Eh ano to? Munggo to eh. Anong aanihin mo dito? Toge. So, kailangan po. Hindi ganon, hindi ba? Kailangan from our income, sana unahin nating pilasin ang para sa ating kinabukasan. You will have to set aside the money for your future, the fulfillment of your dreams, the life that you want to live after working for the money. Doesn't that make sense to you? So ano po ang rekomendasyon ko? Eh, sabi ko nga eh, di ba? Even within those platforms, they give you the chance, they give you the opportunity. Alam nyo ba sa Gcash, yung G-Invest na icon, pwede mong ilipat. Imbes na nandun lang siya sa likod, kung nasan lahat yung application, ilagay nyo siya sa inyong dashboard. Itinuro ko po ito dun sa aking video about G-Invest by Gcash. Kasi if we're serious in our investing, it has to be on our dashboard. We have to see it regularly. Second, di ba pwede yung mag-set ng reminders? You can actually set reminders. So, ilagay nyo na doon para nasasabihan kayo ng app. Every time pwedeng mag-invest. In senas ba yan? Or tuwing katapusan ng buwan. We have to be consistent in our investment discipline. We have to make these regularly in order for us to be on the solid track to a secure and prosperous life. Second, yung mga platforms po na yan are very convenient. They're very convenient. They're very simple. Pero yan ba, pababayaan na lang natin na ganyan? Or tayo ba'y magtutuloy ng ating pag-aaral? Do we continue the education to learn a bit more about these investments in order to expand our knowledge about them? So much so that we can transcend what we know today and get ourselves to a much higher level. Hindi po excuse na merong mga convenient and simple platforms, wala na tayong responsibilidad. I'd want you to make sure that you continue your education, continue your learning within this financial journey. At ang importante po, I've always shared this with many friends. Choose a community that you can be part of. Hindi po madali minsan yung ikaw lang mag -isi. Alam niyo yung ganito, parang nagwo-work out kayo sa gym or nagja-jogging kayo. Sometimes when you're alone, it's hard to find the inspiration and motivation. Mas maganda po, may mga kasama tayo. So, if you can join communities and you can seek out friends who are very serious about their financial track, be with them most of the time so that all together you will fulfill your dreams, you will be on track to achieve your financial goals. Growth always comes with inherent risk. Kailangan po alam natin na ang rates of return, pag mataas, ang kakambal niyan, mas mataas na risk. So we have to understand what is this all about. Kasi nakakatakot po eh. Even sa Gcash, ha? ang ganda ng kita ng Global Consumer Trends Feeder Fund. At ang ganda rin nung return ng Global Technology Feeder Fund. Ang hindi ko po gustong nakikita at baka mangyari, abay lahat ng pera nyo doon nyo ilalagay. And sometimes most of you are even doing it without really assessing and matching this with your risk appetite. Ang sagot po dito is asset allocation. 
Now, that might be a technical term for many of you, but alam nyo po, I intend to discuss asset allocation and simplify it for all of you. If you're interested in that, pwede ba ho? Pakisulat yan sa comment section. Rex, I'm interested. Tuluan mo nga kami ng asset allocation. Alam nyo po, it can look like it is a complicated matter, but asset allocation can be done in a simple way. Kahit nga po within G-Invest by Gcash, kahit nga po within what you're using right now as a technological financial or investment platform, nagagawa po ang asset allocation. And from there, you can expand it to look at other things like insurance, real estate, even collectibles na papagsama-sama po yan. Ang importante, alam natin how we categorize our assets, alam natin how it matches not only our goals, but also our attitudes towards risk and the kind of portfolio that we should have to match all that. In the end, the other vital thing to do is to follow through and monitor all of these investments. It is not enough na nakapaglagay tayo, okay na. Maganda po yung nire-review din natin. San ba patungo? Tayo ba ay may tinatawag na punteria as far as portfolio is concerned? And are we on the pathway to get there? Alam nyo po, ang pinaka-problema sa iba, baka akala nila invest lang ng invest, tapos saka na lang natin tingnan mamaya. Ang worst dito, ganito eh. Pag may kumita ng konti, we withdrawin na. mag invest uli. We withdrawin uli. Apa, sasayangin po natin ang oportunidad. We're just going to waste the kind of blessing these platforms are giving us because we are not using them for the right purposes. And lastly, and most importantly, at a time like this, please, continue to give. Tumulong po tayo sa iba because as I've always said, that gives us a feeling of abundance. That's very important so that we increase our level of confidence in the way we do our investing and we're able to help people in need during this pandemic. Again, I hope you like this video. Give it a thumbs up para po doon sa mga hindi pa namin subscribers. Please do subscribe. We're coming up with loads of new videos to focus on stuff like I told you, asset allocation and other complicated investment concepts and principles that we will distill and simplify for you. Look at this as your education channel and a simple one that will really guide you on your pathway to the fulfillment of your dreams. Again, this is Rex Mendoza. I wish all of you all the very best. I hope that you're healthy and your loved ones are okay. Blessings always.